Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, we will discuss band stop responses or band stop filter. Now, we saw in case of a band pass uh, filter that two stages that is the high pass and the low pass are cascaded in series. But in case of a band stop filter, we have to put these two filters in parallel. So the signal can go either through the high pass or through the low pass and this way we realize the band stop filter. Now since uh, this is an, uh, like an OR gate, either it can go through here or it can go through here. So the output will be summation of the two, not multiplication as it was done in case of a band pass. So output will be summation of the two filters and this is the characteristics of the high pass we have learned earlier plus characteristics of the or sorry transfer function of the second power. Transfer function of the first uh, high pass plus transfer function of the low pass. Okay, so we concluded that it will be the sum of the uh, two transfer functions of the high pass and low pass. And since they are independent to separate therefore we can consider them individually and to do this we replace s by j omega as we have discussed earlier why we do this because we are trying to find the frequency response okay so replacing s by j omega and taking the mod so j omega goes from here this becomes omega square alpha square so this is the uh, overall gain of the high pass and similarly from here replacing s by j omega and taking mod this is the overall gain of the low pass and from these two we can also conclude that the this is the cutoff frequency for high pass alpha 1 and alpha 2 is the cutoff frequency for the low pass. And the overall gain, Ts, will have a band stop characteristics as shown in this figure, provided alpha 2 is less less than alpha 1. So you can see alpha 2 is less less than alpha 1 and this is stopping it. So that is why this will be called a band stop response. Now believe me, this is correct, but if you want to know how, then get ready. Okay, so we were here, we had defined the two gains, so the high pass gain and the low pass gain in terms of omega. Now, to see why we get a, a stop band, we have to plot the straight lines or the asymptotes of these equations of these terms. And we'll do that at three frequency ranges, the low frequency, high frequency, and at mid frequency. Let's start with the, uh, this is just to remind you that asymptotes are the straight lines following curves. Okay, so the first one we are taking low frequency where omega is less less than alpha 2 and less than uh, alpha 1. And if you now see uh, the two filters, omega has to be less than alpha 1, so it will be somewhere here in this range. And it is also less than alpha 2, that means it is further to the left, so it will be somewhere here. So let's see by our red arrow. So this is the approximate position of omega. 
And now from uh, this position you can conclude that the stop band of the high pass gain, now this high pass filter has a stop band here and the low pass filter pass band gain, gain is here and since pass band has more amplitude than the stop band therefore we can say that the low pass filter dominates uh, the output and so the overall gain is determined by the low pass filter and since overall gain is determined by the low pass filter therefore we will not consider this portion we will neglect this we will now concentrate on this now if we look at the conditions omega is less than alpha 2 and less than alpha 1 that means alpha 2 is much greater than omega and therefore omega is neglected and under root alpha 2 square will become alpha 2 so the overall gain tj omega from here we neglected the first one so this is dominating and so overall gain will be k2 over alpha 2 k2 over alpha 2 so this is due to uh, uh, this is at the low frequency okay now uh, we go to the other extreme we say that omega is greater greater than alpha 2 and alpha 1 take help of the uh, diagram again so omega will be somewhere here greater than alpha 1 and greater than alpha 2 as shown by the arrow and you can see that the stop band of low pass has much low uh, amplitude than the pass band of high pass therefore we can say that the high pass dominating at this frequency and therefore the overall gain will be by the high pass and so we can neglect this one and also since omega is greater than alpha 1 and alpha 2 therefore we can say that omega is dominating here so alpha 1 can be neglected and from here under root omega square will become omega and omega omega cancels therefore the overall amplitude will be equal to k1 okay so the overall amplitude will be equal to k1 t2 is neglected so due to the first one okay now let's uh, summarize the two findings so we can say that there is a low frequency pass band and there is a high frequency pass band at low frequency we had a pass band of uh, low pass filter and at high frequency we had a pass band of high pass filter so if we want to plot the two magnitudes we will get a low frequency pass band something like this and we'll also get a high frequency pass band and the pass band normally ha have the same gain and therefore we can say that k1 is equal to k2 over alpha so k1 is equal to k2 over alpha okay now let's consider the mid frequency so the frequency is greater than alpha 2 so it is somewhere here but it is less than alpha 1 so it is somewhere here let's see with the arrow okay so this is where the frequency is and if you notice in both cases high high pass also has the stop band here and low pass also has a stop band here so the range falls in the stop band of both the first order gains and since we know uh, the gains and in, in these so we can write the equation for the straight line just we, we write 
y is equal to 10 t. Therefore, here variable is omega. So, we will write in the uh, um, high pass gain to be k 1 over alpha 1 multiplied by omega. This is a rising slope and for the low pass it will be k 2 over omega just like as y is equal to 10 over t. So, it is a falling slope. And when these two gains or these two points, let us say they are same, that is the point where these two asymptotes will intersect. So, let us see. So, this is for the first one, this is second one, and this is the point of intersection, and this point will be at this condition. And from here, we can also conclude that the overall gain approaches low frequency when T j is k 2 alpha. So, this is here the low frequency and the overall gain approaches uh, high frequency when T j omega is k 1. Okay. Now, we also know or we also concluded that k 1 is equal to k 2 over alpha 2. Generally, the two amplitudes are same and therefore, from this we can replace k 1 by k 2 over alpha. So, k 2 over alpha and then we simplify, we get the equation like this and then we cut k 2 from both sides and therefore, we get omega square is equal to alpha 1 multiplied by alpha 2 and from here, we can conclude that the intersection frequency, this frequency, this point here, the intersection frequency will be omega is equal to under root alpha uh, 1 multiplied by alpha 2. Now, let us see the overall picture. This is the overall picture. This was uh, the pass band for uh, the low frequency, the low, uh, low pass gain dominates the frequency below the intersection. So, this is low pass and the high pass gain dominates above the intersection. So, above the intersection, this is the high pass gain. This point is the low pass cutoff frequency omega c 1 and this is the cutoff frequency for high pass omega c 2 is equal to alpha 1. So, I hope this gives you uh, some idea as to how we get uh, a notch filter or a stop band filter by using uh, two filters in parallel. Thank you.